So in this example, we're going to cover two topics. We're going to cover how to convert um, values from nominal values to real values using the CPI or price index in general. And then we'll talk about how to calculate percent change over time, um, both between like one year from one year to the next year. So you can see kind of inflation as it changes over time. Um, but then we also need to account for compounding inflation and compounding interest. Um, and so I'll show you how to do both of those with Excel. So there's uh, an Excel file on this page that you can download. Um, go ahead and download that. It's a whole bunch of data from the Federal Reserve that I downloaded for you uh, beforehand with some different columns. Um, so go ahead and open that in Excel and you should see something like this. Um, where we have, um, this is annual data. So we have January 1st, 1990 all the way up to January 1st, um, 2018. Um, we have the CPI value, um, which is again based on a basket of goods that the Federal Reserve keeps track of over time and, and calculates the, the general price index. Um, this CPI, um, for whatever reason, the Federal Reserve uses um, $1982. Um, so if we went all the way back, um, this is 1990, if we kept going back to 1980, eventually the CPI would be 100 in the base year. And so whatever value um, the CPI is based on, that's where it's going to be 100. And so what this shows is the CPI has gone up by 27 points since 1980 by the time it got to 1990. Um, if you look down in 2018, it was up 149 extra points above 1980's um, value. Um, so that you don't really need to worry about that too much. It's just um, if you want to know what the base year is, um, you just look to wherever it is 100. Um, we also have some other columns for population, for total personal income in the United States. Um, health expenditures per capita, and then personal income per capita. And all this is, um, is basically total personal income divided by population. Um, and that's what gives us the personal income per capita. So what we have right now is these values here um, are nominal. This is basically what was written down in 1990. Um, for whatever the, the annual income or average annual income for families was. Um, so in 1990, the average household earned $19,000. Um, by the time we got to 2017, um, the average family earned $51,000. So that looks like a huge increase in personal earnings, um, where this is like really low for a family and this is like middling, middle class level. That's, that's pretty good. Um, the issue here though, is that these values are nominal. This is just what was written down at the time. That 19,000 was not the same as 19,000 today. You could buy a lot more with $19,000 back in 1990 than you could today. So what we need to do is adjust this column and convert it into the same year of dollars. Um, what we'll do is first we'll use the CPI column to convert all of these values into 1982 dollars, um, which again, you likely weren't alive in 1982, I wasn't. Um, so it, it's hard to um, imagine what that means in 1982 dollars. Um, so we'll, we'll shift it to 1982 dollars and then I'll show you how you can shift it to like today's dollars where it makes more sense. The, the ultimate year doesn't matter because all you're saying is like you're comparing what you could have bought with some year's dollars in this year compared to um, in 2017 what could you have bought with that same year's dollars. Okay, so what we're going to do is make a new column here in column G. We're going to call it um, real 1982 income. It doesn't matter what we call the column. We'll just um, make it a little bit wider. So the formula for converting um, nominal values to real values is this right here. And this is um, on the example page for today. Um, where you take whatever the nominal value is, whatever was written down at the time, you divide it by the price index and then divide that by 100, and then that will be the real value. So if we move that back to the side, what we need to do is make a new equation here. We'll say equals, we want the nominal value, which is this personal income per capita, and we're going to divide that by the price index divided by 100. So we're going to open a parenthesis here, and we're going to say we want to divide by CPI here, divided by 100, and then close parentheses. So that's our formula here. We are taking this regular GDP per capita divided by 127.5 divided by 100. And if we hit enter, this is what personal income per capita was in 1982 dollars, only $15,000. And so there was kind of some inflation there. It's gone up by 4,000-ish dollars. Um, and that's a normal thing to see. 
Um, so now this whole column is going to be in 1982 dollars. So if you grab the corner of this cell here and drag it down all the way down to the very end of the column here, then what it will do is convert all of our personal income per capita values into 1982 dollars. So it started off at fifteen thousand um, dollars was the 1982 dollars was GDP per capita in 1990. By the time we got to 2018, that had gone up to twenty-one thousand dollars, and so income had been rising. But it's not because uh, it, it didn't go up to fifty-one thousand dollars. That's a thirty thousand dollar difference. That extra thirty thousand that that it grew um, in the nominal values here is just because of inflation. It's just kind of gotten more expensive to do things but um, everything like all prices have gone up all income has kind of gone up in in concert with that so this is a more accurate view of how income has grown over time um, the issue with this though is that's in 1980 dollars or 1982 dollars and again i was not alive back then most of you were not alive back then what does that even mean to to spend in 1982 dollars so what we need to do is somehow get a cpi column here that is based not in 1982 dollars, but is based in like 2018 dollars, because we remember 2018, you were all alive back then. Um, so the, the nice thing we can do, and the reason why the Fed doesn't actually give us a column for different years of CPI, is because we can choose whatever base year we want, um, just using a fairly simple equation. This is the equation we use to convert um, one, a price index for one year into a different year. Um, you take whatever the price index is in the current year, divide it by your new year or your target year, um, and then times that by 100. And that will be the new adjusted CPI for whatever year you care about. So we're going to use that formula, and we're going to make a new column here called um, 2018 CPI. So all we're doing is just adjusting this CPI column to make it so that it's based in $2018 instead of um, $1982. So the formula we use is we say the price index for the current year, which is this 127.5, divided by, and then we want the CPI or the price index for the new year. And so we want it in $2018, so we'll come and click on 2018. Um, we want to lock that cell so that when we drag this down, it's not going to try to look at the next year um, because there is no next year here, but had we chosen a different year like 2010, then it would suddenly start basing it on 2011 and then 2012 and 2013. We don't want that. So to lock it, um, if in the, the formula here, we put a dollar sign in front of the B and a dollar sign in front of the 30, that means even if we drag this, it's going to anchor it in B30 regardless of, of where we drag it. It's not going to change those letters and change those numbers. Um, and so now if we hit enter, Oh, and then we need to multiply by 100, because that's a small number. So times 100. There we go. So that is our um, CPI value in 2018 um, language for 1990. And so if we drag this all the way down, we should see that by the time we get to 2018, it's roughly 100. It's not quite 100. Um, It should be. Oh, it's because that's interesting. Because um, we didn't quite make it all the way down. There we go. Yeah, I didn't drag it all the way down to 2018. So in 2018, it's 100, which means that's the base year for this price index here. So all of the values here are going to be based on $2018. So we can use this now to make a new column called real 2018 income. And so this is going to scale up GDP per capita into roughly today's dollars. Um, so again, the formula for that is, let's bring it over here. You take the nominal value divided by, by the price index divided by 100. Um, the price index we're going to use now is the 2018 version of the CPI, not the 1982 version of the CPI. So we're going to say equals our nominal value, so it's 19,000 here, divided by the 2018 CPI, which we want to put in parentheses here, divided by 2018 CPI divided by 100. So now, what this means is that even though like, it was written down at the time in 1990 that GDP per capita was $19,000 per family or per person, 
um, in 2018 dollars, that's the equivalent of 38,000. So if you imagine a family or a person earning $38,000 a year, that's roughly what it was like back in 1990. You could buy the same amount of stuff with $38,000 that you could with $19,000 back then. Um, if we drag this down now, we can see all of GDP per capita um, throughout all time here. So all of these values now are in um, 2018 dollars. Um, except we don't have 2018 GDP per capita here, so it ended up zero, so that's fine. Um, but now all of these values make a lot more sense um, because they are um, in dollar amounts that we can think of. You can remember 2018, you can remember how much you could buy stuff with um, in 2018. So that's really what this is showing, that like when somebody says, I bought a house for X number of dollars back in 1990, um, in today's money, that's almost twice as much as what you could use um, back then. So if you bought like a car for twenty thousand um, dollars, nowadays that's almost for uh, almost forty thousand dollars. That's almost double the price, even though it's the same car. Um, and so that's the effect of inflation, and we adjusted it there. Um, we can choose any year you want. If you want to do twenty ten dollars, um, you just adjust this, make a new column, and instead of dividing everything by the twenty eighteen CPI you divide everything by the 2010 CPI, and then you'll have a column for 2010 CPI. Um, so that's how you do it when you have lots of um, columns like this. If you can download the CPI value from the Federal Reserve, then you can do this calculation um, in Excel. In real life though, like as I mentioned in the lecture, sometimes when I watch old movies, I do the conversion um, while I'm watching to see what, what the dollars actually mean. I don't use Excel, that's nuts. Um, what I do instead is if you go to Google and you search for CPI calculator, you'll end up with a page like this from the Bureau of Labor, Statistic Bureau of Labor Statistics. And this does all of the calculations for you by hand for individual values. And so if, let's say your grandparents said we bought a house for $5,000 or your great grandparents in like 1935, we can go down to 1935 and so we say $5,000 in January 1935 is the same today as almost $100,000. And so that's kind of how much it has grown. Like that's the value um, back then. Um, if somebody says like, I bought a Coca-Cola in 1935 for 25 cents, um, because that was like the popular way of pricing Coca-Cola, it was cheap. Um, that's the same today as like $4 a bottle. So that's pretty expensive. It has, like, it's gotten cheaper over time. Um, and so you can just use the CPI inflation calculator to do like on the fly conversions. You don't need to always download CPI values from the Federal Reserve and make all the calculations by hand. Um, you can just do it here and it's a lot easier. Um, so that's how you convert things um, from nominal values into real values and you can adjust for inflation um, using the CPI column here, but also using kind of the Bureau of Labor Statistics um, CPI inflation calculator.